everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jovianna and if you are new here, thank you so much for tuning in. If you're not, thank you for coming back and watching my video. I know that it has been two weeks since I filmed. Well, not since I filmed, two weeks since I posted a video. What had happened was I filmed a beautiful eye look. If you follow me on Instagram, I like went on a rant about it. Um, and I posted it, it was gorgeous, I loved the way that it came out, and then I sat down to edit it and deleted it. Who does that? I sat in front of my computer for almost an hour in denial. It was awful. But, then I started doing research, trying to get inspired, and I came up with this look right here. The inspiration for this look is actually, um, uh, let me find a picture for you guys. This eye look right here by Adrienne Bailon. I love the way that the look came out. Her eyes are super smoky, but yet they're soft underneath. The skin was beautiful and radiant. Um, I was so in love with it. So this is what I came up with. This is my version of the look. Of course, I have no idea what product she used, but I just kind of used what I had on board. Um, I love the way the look turned out and I hope that you guys do too. If you want to find out how I got this look, just keep on watching. Okay guys, so I zoomed you in, I did one eye off camera and now we're going to do the other together. There's two things going on in the background, lawn mowing and then the dog's also reacting to it, so I am so sorry. I will try to edit out as much of the noise as possible, but... Disclaimer given, let's get started. So we're gonna use two palettes today and I almost never do this, but I couldn't find the right colors. Um, I saw a picture of this eye look right here that was posted by Adrian Bailon and I loved it. I thought it was really pretty. The under eye is really soft. Everything is blended out and hence the inspiration for the look. So we're gonna use the Through My Eyes uh, Eye Love Sadayin ColourPop palette, specifically these two colors here. And then I pulled out an oldie. This is the Morphe X Kathleen Lights palette. And they have this really pretty green that I like to blend in to the lid shade also. So let's get started. Um, with any good eye look, you always need to set in or put in a good crease color. So we're gonna start off with the shade Sandalwood here, which is a nice neutral brown. Um, light brown tan. I love it just because it's not too warm. It's not too cool. It's neutral and it's perfect for this look. So we're going to put that right into the crease area. I like to just blend in circular motions all the way through the very inner corner because we're going to bring that in pretty far into the eye here. And always remember that with the shade, you want to use a nice fluffy brush, but you also want to start creating your shape. I'm gonna just start blending this all the way through the outer corner, pulling it up as I go, and then tilting my head back really helps to just make sure I get a good idea of the shape of my eye. And we're not building color at all. This is just laying down a foundation so that we know exactly where we're gonna lay these dark colors. So we're gonna move on to the dark colors right away. And so the first brush I'm gonna use is this guy here. It's a blending brush, but it's pointed. I'm not really gonna blend with this. I'm really just gonna map out where I wanna blend the green. And we're gonna go into Moody, which is this green right here. Guys, I know that it feels like I haven't posted in forever, but it's because I haven't posted in forever. It's been about two weeks since I posted, but I have filmed. I know that doesn't make sense, but I filmed and then deleted it. It was awful, awful. Ugh. So I'm just laying this into the crease area, bringing it pretty far into the inner corner, just so we can match the other side, and then winging it, up, flicking it out in the outer space here. Once I've got the color laid onto where I want it, I'm gonna switch gears with the brushes, and I'm gonna go into an actual fluffy blending brush. This one is my favorite. It's the Morphe M433. I'm going to take that same color, work a little at a time with these dark colors. I know that this gray is very intimidating, but just work a little bit at a time and be patient. It's okay if it falls into the lid just because everything's just going to be blended and smoked out anyways. Once we've got the green laid out, I do want to soften the outer parts of it. So what I'm going to do is take some of that sandalwood shade on that fluffy, on a blending brush, I'm sorry. No, that first blending brush. And we are just going to soften up the edges a tiny 
tiny bit here and what I mean by that is just kind of run it towards the outer part that's closest to your brow just to soften up the colors a little bit. Okay, good. We're not, what, we're not quite done with that green, but that's okay. We can continue to move on. So I'm going to take a nice, thick, flat brush, and we're going to pick up the Emerald Dream Shade, which is this guy right here, and we're going to apply that from the outer corner all the way to about two-thirds of the eye. I'm going to make sure you pack the brush with this color. It comes out pretty pigmented, which is very nice. You don't have to do anything. Um, I, when I know that I'm going to smoke things out, I don't really like to wet the brush just because the whole part of the smoky blend is where everything's just kind of meshed together. And with the spritzing with a Fix Plus or with any other type of spray, it kind of foils up the shadow. It makes it really hard for you to be able to create that smoke. Everything kind of looks way too defined with that. So I'm going to blend that into that crease shade that we've been doing just so that everything is cohesive and blended in. Okay, great. And then we're gonna switch gears using a different flat brush, just a little smaller. We're gonna go into the Morphe X Kathleen Lights palette. And we're gonna do the same thing with this other green. It's just a little bit lighter in color and it gives a beautiful gradient faded effect. And we're gonna apply that to the inner corner and the lid space that we have left. And again, blending up. The other color that we're gonna use for the inner corner is actually a loose pigment. This guy is by Mech and Mia. And it is in the shade white, but it's more of like an iridescence. It gives more of that like green, yellow, gold, and I love it for the inner corner. So I'm gonna take it on the other side of this flat brush. And we are going to place it in the inner corner and then blend it in. And then I'm not gonna use a liner, but I do want that shape in my eye. So what I like to do is use anything that has a nice flat end. This is specifically my favorite item to use. You can use uh, primers or a little hard tape at the beginning would also help. Um, and I'm just gonna map it out. And what I like to do is imagine that I smoked out my lower eyelid and place it right there. Not too tight to the lash line, but a little below it and making sure that the shape would be equal to my other side. And I'm gonna take the same brush, pack on that dark matte green, and we are going to deepen up this outer corner here. All right, so no liner, but I do wanna darken up the lash line so that I can blend the lashes in. And what I'm gonna do is take more of that green, and I'm gonna just tight line with the shadow to make sure I deepen it up just a little bit right at the root. And I'm actually going to stop a third of the way in just because I do not want to darken up the inner corner. I want that bright and luminous. So to prep for our lashes, I'm actually using a pretty wispy natural lash. That's what I felt like the look um, that she did have. And so I'm using the Kiss Lashes in the number 11 and some mascara, so I'm just going to put a nice coat of mascara on. I'm just gonna come up from the top, and I like to lay it right in the center of the lid. Then I will fix the outer corner into place, and then I'll do the inner corner. Perfection. This step is optional. I'm just gonna put an additional coat of mascara. That just makes me feel like I can blend them in a little better, but then it also thickens up the, the lash line. Because I don't do it all the way to the top, I don't want to mess up the lashes, but I do wiggle quite a bit on the lash line, so it helps them look a little thicker. All right, so I'm gonna take a break from the eyes and we are going to film the complexion and then we'll come back to the eyes. Okay guys, so we are zoomed out, ready to start our complexion. For complexion, we are going to keep it glowy. Um, that's my preference. I know for a fact that um, most of Adrienne's videos, she films a very glowy look. So I am going to start with primer. We're using the L'Oreal Infallible Matte Lock, and that's just gonna be for the center of the face. Next, we're gonna continue on with the Magic Lumi 
primer. I love this for a glowy, dewy look. Make sure you shake. Sometimes I forget and it comes out all funky with that. But it does give a very pretty finish to the skin. Once you have that on, we are going to try the L'Oreal Infallible Longwear Shaping Stick. I tried this out on the video that I deleted. I loved it. It was it wore really nice all day. It reminded me of the Makeup Forever foundation stick, um, except it's half the price. So what I'm going to do is I am going to apply this and blend it out with a brush, push it in with a beauty blender. This is a little lighter. I actually got quite a bit of a tan over the weekend, and I had bought this previously. So anyways, we will make it work. It's got really good coverage. It's very creamy. Very, very creamy, and I like creamy personally just because I like the dewy look, so I'm going to use my Morphe JH03 brush. Alright, so once we have the foundation on, we're going to move on to contouring, and we're going to do a little bit of cream contouring using the Wet n Wild uh, contouring stick in the shade Call Me Maple. I love this contouring stick. I don't know if it's a, definitely the formula, the, the size of the stick, also the color is perfect. And I'm gonna apply that on my cheekbones above where the tragus is. The tragus usually is where the hollows of your cheeks are, but because when you're blending, things tend to fall down because we're blending so widely, you wanna apply the contour above the hollows. So I'm gonna do my forehead nose. Same thing applies to the nose guys. My where I would normally use a powder is a little lower than where I'm applying the cream but because when you blend things tend to fall down you want to make sure that you are applying it right above the area where you normally would. So I'm going to do my chin below the lip just so I can create a fuller looking lip and we are going to blend that out. To blend my cream contour out, I love to use this Real Techniques buffing brush. I've had this brush for a really long time. So you see where I mean where our line started way up here and now we've perfectly placed that? I love it. I mean, don't get me wrong, you can always go back and clean it up with concealer, but these are just little tips and tricks that help you figure out where you could be going wrong with your contouring. This contouring stick, CVS, it is like four or five dollars. I highly recommend it. Okay, so we're going to leave our nose like this and we're going to move on to concealer. For concealer, I'm going to use the L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear Concealer and I've got two shades. I have been loving this concealer so much. It is very full coverage, a little bit goes a long way. The formula looks amazing underneath the eyes. Um, so what I'm going to do first is use a actual concealing shade for me and this is in the shade Pecan. And I'm going to place this to conceal the under eye area and the other shade I have is Oatmeal and that's going to be to highlight. So what I do is take this, I start off, you see where the darkest part of my under eye area is right here? That's where I'm going to apply the product first because when you pull it right out of the tube, that's where the most amount of product is. I think the mistake that we all make sometimes is overdoing it. Um, concealing is just spot concealing for certain areas. You don't need to do all the crazy trends that Instagram, Facebook, YouTube is showing you, you really just need to make sure that you're keeping it as light and as natural as possible because that's going to be the best outcome, the best wear to your makeup. So once I apply that there, I'm going to stop for a second and we're going to blend out into the skin. I find that the creasing happens when we overdo the amount of product that we're using, especially under the eye area. So we're going to take that on a beauty blender, not a beauty blender, this is a Morphe beauty sponge. And I like to take that all the way up to the bridge of the nose. Because that's going to help me blend out that nose contour. We're going to clean up some right here by our eyeshadow and then we are going to just bring whatever's left over right here. What a huge difference. And it's just here where I applied it. Okay, that's the biggest thing, guys. And I want you to remember that. Don't do all that crazy stuff. I used to do that all the time, too. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh my god, this concealer sucks. It's creasing. Well, you used half a bottle. 
is just dot right here. Just like that for the highlight. How pretty. And I don't know if you guys can see it with the reflection of the lighting, like my skin is still pretty dewy and glowy and it's that primer that we use underneath. Love that. So we are ready to move on to the setting portion and we are using the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powders in two shades. So I've got Fair, which is going to go under my eyes to help further highlight and I have Light, which is going to help to set the rest of my face. So I'm going to take Fair first. Blending in. One last time, we're gonna take our sponge with the powder. All right, so we're gonna let that sit for a moment and we are gonna move on to setting the rest of our face. And like I said, I've just got a darker shade for that. And for the rest of my face, what I like to do is take a nice fluffy brush like this one and dip into the powder because there's a lot in the container and then I'll take the lid and I'll press it into the lid. It's a lot, you can see it coming out. Shake off the excess. You guys see how like flawless, oh, beautiful, gorge. So we are all done with that. I'm just gonna go back into the fair color for a quick moment and what I'm gonna do is I am going to Highlight a little underneath that contour that we did with the creams because I want to make sure that we are cutting the cheekbones. So this time I am going to take it right where the tragus is. That's going to sit there while we finish off our eyes. So in the picture, um, Adrian is not wearing barely anything underneath her lower lash line, which is great because I love that. So what I'm going to do is just going to take a nice pencil brush and I am going to take that sandalwood color and we are going to just smudge it in so that everything kind of looks blended and it doesn't look too bare. Um, but I love that. I'm a huge fan and you guys know I'm a huge fan of like a bright under eye area. That's why I use the white or the um, cream colors in my lash line. I love that. Perfection, guys. The next thing we're going to do is take a pencil. This guy is a 12 hour made to last eyeshadow pencil by Jordana and Continuous Almond, and we're going to lash line our inner lash. You're going to apply some lower lash mascara. Nothing new here. We're doing the makeup forever. What is this again? <laughs> Nothing new. Excessive lash mascara. Apply that to the lash line and be generous. Perfect. Oh. Look at that, look how beautiful that is. Oh. All right, so our eye look are finished. We can continue on with the face. And I do that just so I can take a moment to like let this set. The NYX palette to contour up the face just a tiny bit, not too, too much, because I really do like the tan that this cream contour gave me. I'm gonna take it on my JH05 brush. Right here in the hollows. Guys, we are almost there, and I'm so excited because this look is coming together beautifully. So the next thing we're gonna do, and it's like literally almost the last thing, is highlight, blush, and lip. So for highlight, we're using the Wet n Wild Highlighting Powder in the shade Precious Petals, and it's so beautiful. It goes perfectly with this bronzy look. This is like a gold, light gold. It's just gorgeous. So we are going to go ahead and highlight it up. I'm using a nice um, angled fluffy highlighting brush. This is the JH06 and I use this brush when I want to highlight in a wide area or a large space, which I do. I want this glow everywhere just because I want it to be a super glowy look. So we're going to do it with the cheekbones. Forehead. I 
and chin. We cannot forget the nose highlight, so I'm going to take it on the bridge of the nose and then the tip of the nose. Just like that. Beautiful. For blush today, we are gonna use the BH Cosmetics Professional Blush Palette. And this guy has some very fun, cool colors. We are gonna stick to like the peachy tones, just cause I want like a no blush, blush tone. And I'm gonna use my angled brush from the JH04 Jaclyn Hill and Morphe Collection. And I'm lightly gonna dab. I'm even gonna use some of this brown-ish looking shade here cause I really don't want like a blush. Pinky blush. I want more of like a toned down peachy. Really pretty. Just like that. And we're ready to move on to lips. For lips today, I am really excited, really, really excited. I'm using the LA Girl Lip Liner in Sugar and Spice, and I'm also gonna pair that with um, a Givenchy lip, and this is called Street Rose. It is like the perfect nude glossy lip. Um, I love this guy. So I am going to put my lips on, fix my hair, and I'll be right back. This is the finished look right here. I love the way that this turned out. The skin is just super radiant and glowy and beautiful but flawless at the same time. The eye look is everything. It is everything. If you're someone who's wanting to play with color but you don't want it to look like someone punched you in the face with a dark black eye as a result, this is perfect because we left the lower lid pretty open so that you still look awake and radiant and glowy. Um, this is perfect for daytime too just because of the same reason. Um, the lash came out beautiful, the lip pairing. I love the way this look turned out, guys, and I hope that you did too. If you did, do not forget to comment down below. Give me suggestions coming up springtime, summertime looks that you'd like to see. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button. That lets you know when I upload videos. That way you are up to date with what's going on. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.